Hi everybody, thanks for watching my lectures. The topic of my today's lecture is about the comparison of two well-known and uh, important flows called the creeping flow or the Stokes flow or the low Reynolds number flow and the potential flow. These uh, uh, flows are very similar but uh, of course they have many important uh, differences so it's important for you to complete totally understand the similarities and differences between these two uh, well-known applicable flows previously in one of my previous lectures I have introduced the Reynolds axis it was uh, an axis which uh, the Reynolds number was varying along that axis and it had two ends the left end or the beginning of the uh, axis uh, was devoted to the creeping flow and the Reynolds number was very small near zero not always but uh, mostly near zero and the, end, the other end or the right hand side of the axis was uh, devoted to the potential flow or the Reynolds number uh, goes to infinity. Let's uh, start the comparison. Uh, the first case, as I told you, is about the Reynolds number. The creeping flow is a kind of flow, uh, is a kind of flow uh, which has a negligible inertia in comparison to the viscose forces. So the Reynolds number goes to zero has and the inertial terms or the nonlinear terms or the advection term in the acceleration vanish. But here we have the potential flow, which is the irrot an irrotational flow, and the Reynolds goes to infinity, and uh, in contrast to the creeping flow, the viscose forces uh, are small in comparison to their inertia. So here the uh, density is omitted from the equations, and in this case the viscosity uh, vanishes. Here, okay, the also, the, this is the main difference of these two flows. The other one is about the non-dimensionalization of the pressure. Uh, as you see, P star here is the dimensionless pressure, which is a, uh, which is the, which is defined uh, as a fraction of pressure difference. This is the pressure of somewhere. For example, on an airfoil or on on the body minus the pressure of infinity over product of three parameters: the viscosity, dynamic viscosity, uh, times the incoming velocity or the characteristic velocity and the length scale. The denominator of this fraction is called the viscose pressure, which is a viscose scale for normalization of the pressure. But here pressure is normalized using the dynamic pressure, which is the, product, which is the half of uh, the product of the density. As you see here, we, the, you don't see the, the density, and here uh, you don't see the viscosity. This is the dynamic pressure. This kind of normalization is more common in different applications. Uh, here, because the Reynolds number goes to zero, the flow velocity is small, so the velocity field is the, the, it diverges less and the flow is incompressible, but uh, the potential flow can be compressible or incompressible with different governing equations, of course. Let's speak about the governing equations. Here in creeping flow, the governing pressure for the, uh, the governing equation for the pressure is the Laplace equation. As you see, the Laplacian of pressure is equal to zero. It can uh, be obtained by neglecting the inertia terms in the navier stokes equation and then uh, take the divergence of both sides of the equation. But here P is obtained from the Bernoulli's equation because the flow is the irrotational, not generally with uh, viscose, but uh, we have viscose potential flows. I will definitely record some videos about the viscose potential flows. But uh, irrotational is uh, is, uh, is um, more um, 
appropriate title. Okay, uh, PKF, the pressure can be obtained from the Bernoulli's equation, but here the governing equation for the pressure is the Laplace equation. Here, because the flow is irrotational, the vorticity vector is a zero, but here again the governing equation for the vorticity vector is the Laplace. Uh, uh, is the Laplace equation. Uh, again, this can be obtained from the navier stokes equation by neglecting the inertia terms and uh, taking the curl of both sides of the equation this time. The governing equation for the stream function, here is the Laplace equation for two-dimensional case. You know that the, the stream function is defined for the two-dimensional, or the plane flow. And again, for two-dimensional flows, the governing equation for the stream function of, for creeping flows is the biharmonic equation. This is the biharmonic operator. This one is the Laplacian operator.